Hi, I'm Dweezil Zappa, and today we're going to talk a little bit more about numbers and sequencing numbers. It's not math rock. It's, it's guitar playing, but it's a way for you to not sound so much like you're only ever playing scales, and you can add in some more interesting rhythms that will surprise you and your friends and the people that listen to your music. So how can you work on this in a way that is easy to explain, that doesn't involve reading and understanding rhythms and all this stuff? We're just going to simply talk about numbers, and you're going to just put the amount of notes to the numbers that we're talking about. So let's say you have a melody that you want to write that goes to a sequence of numbers, like your phone number. Write a melody to your phone number. Now, I'm not talking about the intervals of a scale. I'm just talking about the amount of notes that are in your phone number. You make a melody to it. So if we use the, the phone number from the classic song 8675309, then that's our template for our, our melody, right? Now, this could, this could be any melody in, in many different ways. You can write your own version. But for example, right now, I'll just go ahead and say 8675309. I'm going to start with an 8. And let's, let's say that an eight would be easiest if I just did it on two sets of two strings. So it's four notes. Let's say it's one, two, three, four, right? Then one, two, three, four, two sets of strings. We got eight notes. Pentatonic scale right there. All right, so that's an eight. Now a six, what's the easiest way to do a six on two strings? Three notes per string, right? So. Now you have an option. You can keep the same kind of momentum descending, or you can do or any kind of combination of, of how to sequence three notes on these two strings. So let's mix it up a little bit. So it's uh, descending for the eight, and then I'll add this six like that instead of so check it out. So eight, six, and now we have to do a seven. Now you have an option. You could do a four and a three. You could do a five and a two. I'm going to opt for the five and a two right now because the, one of the easiest ways to do a five is this down. It's a downstroke, pull off, then up, up, up. So two, then three, right? And then if I want to add in two more notes, I can reach those right there. So I could have a one, two, one, two, three, one, two, which is my seven. So there's eight, six, seven. Now that already sounds like it's a, a pre-composed lick, but you're, if you get used to just adding these to any scale that you, you play and just it's strictly about the numbers, you'll start hearing surprising melodies come out with different kind of phrasing and accents. So let's continue on. We have eight, six, seven, now we have a five. We just did this kind of five, but we could do one on a single string. So we could do, like if we stay on the G string, we could do one, two, one, two, three. So from the seven to the five. So now let's hear them all together. Eight, six, seven, five. Now we have two numbers left, or three numbers left, sorry, we have a three, eight, six, seven, five, three, so we can do a three on uh, just three notes on one string, so let's move it back up. That's pretty easy. Then the hardest number in the whole thing for all of us guitar players is the zero. You have to stop playing. That is really hard when you're running your fingers and you just have to put a pause in there. Now the pause can last as long as you want. It doesn't even matter, but it has to be in there because it's part of your, your composition, you see. And so that is just a big pause until you're ready for the final number, which is the nine. And the nine, you could do three threes, you could do a five and a four, you could do a four and a five. There's all kinds of things you should explore. But let's just talk about doing a uh, five and a four. So I'll do it like this. One, two, one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. That is our nine. So let's try to play eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. There you go.
you go. I put in that, that zero. It was really hard for me. I, I didn't want to stop, but I had to. So these are the kind of things that you can do is you can rewrite that melody any way that you want, but you can even start adding other things in there to, to make it even more tricky for yourself. Like every time you move to the new number, you move up a half a step. So like... So you can start really writing bizarre melodies and, and start thinking about different usages for accents and chords, and you can do that even strumming a chord. So it's like, so, you know, let's say it's a, you know, when you start moving things around, you are able to, um, create rhythms and things that you, you wouldn't have just sat down and played. Say, you know what? Today, I'm just going to strum this. If you actually give yourself um, a roadmap with these numbers, it will really give you a lot more creative things to come up with. And it's pretty fun to practice that way because, you know, we all get bored just playing the same old scales. So the compound number system, however you want to call it, write a number, write a melody to your phone number, just have fun, do something different, make music better.